It was somewhere in September when the sun was going down. When I came in search of copy to a darling river town, come and have a drink. We'll call it. Tis a fitting name, I think. And 'twas raining for a wonder. Up it come and have a drink. Beneath the public house veranda, I was resting on my bunk when a stranger rose before me. He said that he was drunk. He apologized for speaking. There was no offense. He swore, but he somehow seemed to fancy that he'd seen my face before. No offence," he said. I told him that he needn't mention it, for I might have met him somewhere. I had travelled round a bit, and I knew a lot of fellows in the bush and in the streets, but a fellow. Can't remember all the fellows that he meets. Very old and thin and dirty were the garments that he wore. Just a shirt and pair of trousers and a boot and nothing more. He was wringing wet, and really, in a sad and sinful plight, his hat was in his left hand, and a bottle in his right. He agreed. You can't remember all the chaps you chance to meet, and he said his name was Sweeney. People lived in Sussex Street. He was camping in a stable, and he swore that he was right. Only father. Blanky horses walking over him all night. He'd apparently been fighting, for his face was black and blue, and he looked as though the horses had been treading on him too. But an honest. Genial twinkle in the eye that wasn't hurt seemed to hint of something better. Spider drinking rags and dirt.
it appeared that he mistook me for a long lost mate of his, one of whom I was the image, both in figure and in fizz. It had had a letter from him, if the chap were living still, for they'd carried swags together from the gulf to Broken Hill. Sweeney yawned a while and hinted that his folks were doing well. And he told me that his father kept the Southern Cross Hotel. And I wondered if his absence was regarded as a loss when he left the elder Sweeney, landlord of the Southern Cross. He was born in Parramatta And he said with humour grim That he'd like to see the city Ere the liquor finished him But he couldn't raise the money He was damned if he could think What the government was doing here he offered me a drink I declined twas self-denial and I lectured him on booze using all the hackneyed arguments that preachers mostly use things I'd heard in temperance lectures I was young and rather green and I ended by referring to the man he might have been And a wise expression struggled with the bruises on his face though his argument had scarcely any bearing on the case what's the use of keeping sober fellas rise and fellas fall what I might have been and wasn't, doesn't trouble me at all. But he couldn't stay to argue. His beer was nearly gone. He was glad, he said, to meet me. He'd see me later on. But he guessed it have to go and get his bottle filled again and he gave a lurch and vanished in the darkness and the rain And of afternoons in cities When the rain is on the land Visions come to me of Sweeney With his bottle 
in his hand With the stormy night behind him And the pub veranda post And I wonder why he haunts me More than any other ghost Still I see the shearers drinking At the township in the scrub and the army praying nightly at the door of every pub and the girls who flirt and giggle with the bushmen from the west but the memory of Sweeney overshadows all the rest Well, perhaps it isn't funny There were links between us two He had memories of cities He had been a jackaroo And perhaps his face forewarned me Of a face that I might see From a bitter cup Reflected in the wretched days to be I suppose he's tramping somewhere Where the bushmen carry swags Cadging round the wretched stations With his empty tucker bags And I fancy out of evenings when the track is growing dim what he might have been and wasn't comes along and troubles him <laughs>